Uh, I need some work still, but I'm still throwing in bullpens and catch play. Let's see it. You said you saw you threw about five to Cal the other day. I don't think you caught any of them. I think they looked yeah. catchable a couple of them, did. Yeah, they weren't great, but um, yeah, I'm just, it's, it's going to be a hard pitch to locate, that's for sure, and kind of throw from my normal like wind-up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and mix it in once a game or something. Is that the hardest thing, is like doing your normal delivery versus like really slowing it down to like the Wakefield delivery? Uh, yeah, like doing my wind-up is yeah. hard to just like get the feel. I kind of got to do like the quick step and yeah, but I'm trying to work on it, so. Could you believe how crazy people went? Like when you threw that to see you in the game, like it blew up, like pitching ninja lost his mind. Everybody mm-hmm. went crazy over it. Yeah, I'm glad it worked out and you swung a miss, so. Um, could have gone a lot worse, but. Do you think that was the, one of the wildest swings that you got to, especially given that you went on to win the World Series at the I'd say so, yeah. Josh, how did you first start playing with that? When did you? Knuckleball? Oh, first knuckleball, yeah. Uh, literally, I was fastball knuckleball. My cousin William and Kevin and Steven, we'd hang out in the backyard and they'd throw me knuckleballs, and I was like, hey, I want to learn that. So I've been throwing it since, like, I don't know, 10 years old. I mean, aside from that pitch, it just seems like the fortification of the rest of your repertoire really took another step forward. How did you feel about just the diverse arsenal of all your pitches when the season ended last year? Uh, yeah, I felt very comfortable. Um, I found a, a good spot with the splitter, to, like halfway through the year and towards the end, used it a lot. Um, uh, made a lot of adjustments, like the slider. Um, I think just being able to locate those pitches towards the end of the year helped me a lot. Um, and yeah, then just build on what I have and kind of tweak some things here and there. And um, yeah, now now the knuckleball, so. George, do you come into this camp, how ahead of do you feel last year? Like everybody's talking about, we got to control his innings again. And, you know, you didn't have the splitter full. Now you have everything kind of set. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're way ahead of where you were last year. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, definitely just like experience wise and kind of understanding how to use my arsenal now, um, but yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be ready to go when, when the time is. Um, yeah, feeling good. How would you assess your season last year? I mean, there was stretches where you're unbelievably hot. You had a, a tough spell there, I think, in September. But how would you assess it overall? Like when you thought back to what happened, what did you think? Um, I think just you know I I hold the losses like over my head a lot more than other people. So I think just kind of getting over that and. Um, you know, reset in the next day and kind of focus on the other start and not kind of have other things in my head and, um, yeah, just go out and compete and kind of forget about what happened last week and, you know, keep your head down, keep doing it. They've said that about players, that they enjoy, they they take the losses harder than they enjoy the wins. Are you one of those people? And I mean, like, is yeah, that? More, probably more times than not, honestly, which, which sucks. But, uh, I don't know, that's just kind of my standard. I always want to, you know, go seven innings. I want to you know, strike out 10 guys or whatever it is. So I'm not pleased with if I don't have like the line that, you know, I set up in my head. So um, it's got to be easier on myself. It's a long do game. Do you feel like you've got to a place where you're able to process that a little bit better, especially after some of those tough losses late in the season? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a matter of just like being able to like debrief and, you know, watch yourself, you know, give up seven runs or something. Like, I would kind of just forget about it and let it linger. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. You said you didn't watch tape for yourself, I think, after one of your starts in June. Have you changed that at all? Do you start to watch? Uh, not really, but just I think a good step for me this year is kind of just diving into um, not like video necessarily, but kind of uh, – Understanding like who I'm facing more and get a better understanding of you know uh, how to attack these guys. George, how important was it to finish the season the way you did? <clears throat> I think score those starts against the Astros, the Rangers, you know, to kind of build off and go into the off season, getting mm-hmm. some of the hiccups that you had earlier in September. Yeah, it was definitely a huge confidence booster. Um, I always like getting the ball in the biggest games, and um, I feel like I, I always bring out my best. Um, when I get that opportunity. So, uh, yeah, I love, you know, throwing against the Astros and doing well against them and same with the Rangers. So, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, win the West this year. 
do you feel like that's a realistic goal as you guys come into camp and you know, kind of saying it out loud and just looking and talking to a lot of those guys in the clubhouse, it's, it just seems like the work ethic's really high and that's the intensity about setting about that standard. It seems like it's really there. Yeah, we all believe it. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, one or two games of like one bad inning or one, you know, one hit could have gone the other way, you know. Um, but we all believe it and, you know, we got a good a good team this year um, and we're all excited. We got some new faces, but I think so far the clubhouse has been great and it'll be it'll be a fun year. How close did you follow the, the offseason and the transactions that the team is making? I mean, you see a lot of well-known and well-liked players leave and there's like a, a lull period before they start to re-add. How, how in tune were you? I wasn't really focused on it much. Um, I kind of just eliminate that stuff in the off season, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy with you know what what we did with what we you know had to work with, and uh, I think we're going to be you know a special team this year. Bryce and Brian had to come up mid season similar path to you. How, how far ahead do you think they are? How much do you think they're going to do? Just having to look at the stuff that they did last year. Yeah, they um, they definitely learned a lot just having like Robbie around and Luis and. Even Marco last year and all those veteran guys, I think it was a super, you know, beneficial for them just learning on a daily basis. And you know, they came right in um, and competed. So I think that you know that's all we asked for. And um, they're they're always wanting to learn, and um, I think they're definitely a step ahead. How would you assess Bryce's splitter? I mean, he's worked a lot on it. I've seen the video of it. I, yeah, the I've been talking about it. You know, me, him, and Logan. Because we're all pretty much similar grips right now. Um, yeah, I've been watching. He's working on it, and I'm, I'm hoping it. You know, it's a really good pitch for him. Um, I think just the deception with the fastball and splitter is like just huge difference from what you know we were doing, like trying to manipulate a changeup and stuff like that. So I think it's going to be a huge pitch for him this year. George, going back to attacking <coughs> hitters, I think when pitchers come up, it's catcher or my best stuff against them. How do you kind of develop into kind of more pitching and knowing their strengths and weaknesses and going at it? Are you speaking like in terms of Cal? Like, or, how sorry, do you can you repeat want that? To attack? How I want to attack? How do, you, how do you, as opposed to, I'm just going to throw my best pitch or I'm going to give them my best stuff mm -hmm. as far as kind of a little bit more playing to their weaknesses? Or yeah, for me, I'm always going to pitch my strengths. I don't, I don't care what they're good at. Um, you know, here's my fastball, and like try to hit it. And I'm gonna locate in the zone, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you in the zone, and you know, you're you're not gonna get a free base. So, um, like my mentality is always gonna be that. But I think just, um, like I said, just kind of doing like the debriefs after games, and kind of seeing, you know, what this guy was looking for here, and like, kind of just getting in the head of a hitter more. Than just you know my simple mentality of just you know screw you hit the hit the hit the fastball so. So you really throw to a nine square in the offseason because mm -hmm. you don't have a catcher? Is it because nobody? Well, has it's not because I don't have one. I just prefer it. Yeah, um, I, just, I mean, like you're are you you're, so you're like in a gym by yourself throwing. Yeah, like a big like turf indoor area. Um, you know, when it's time for me to get on the mound, I put the nine pocket there. Um, I've been doing it for probably four years now in the off season. Haven't even thrown anybody since I came here. Mm -hmm. um, I just like to be super like target oriented. Um, you know, then it kind of just is muscle memory at that point. I'm focused on hitting that square, the top left corner or the bottom right. Um, and then when I throw to the net, I just put an X at the wall and try and hit that X every time. Um, I think you got to practice, you know. People say like, don't aim the ball, but you know, I'm trying to throw to that spot. So I'm going to practice doing that. Sometimes too, I would imagine like, you're just, it's just the net, like you don't have somebody talking to you, you everything, it's just, you're yeah. focused. Headphones and just focus on the X, yeah. What do you listen to? Yeah. I, I, yeah, dubstep, I'm, I like the crazy stuff, yeah. If we put the nine pocket up and we told you to go center, center, like, you know, a dark scene in a movie, and we gave you 10 balls, how many times do you go center, center? Probably seven or eight. Really? Yeah. How are you at darts? I'm okay. Yeah, better pitcher. Because I just like the scene in Ted Lasso when they're throwing the darts. This is what it reminds me of. Like you don't know. We didn't yeah. know you did that. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I started doing it that one year 
uh, probably after the 2020 season, and I kind of just, you know, sometimes it's boring not having a, you know, person to play catch with, but um, I'm super focused, and um, like I said, I just like to be really, you know, nitpicky with where I'm throwing stuff, so. Looks like a lot of kids that practice pitching and say, well, I'm not ready to catch me, but you're just like, well, you don't need a catch. Yeah, you don't need one, yeah. George, just real quick, um, Robbie and Marco had a pretty big impact on you. It's obviously tough to see them leave, but you know, how do you guys feel, especially given that you and Logan have taken a step forward in your career, to just kind of not necessarily step into that veteran role, but just like have a louder voice among the rotation? Yeah, those guys will be missed for sure. Um, but I think like Logan and I aren't as like vocal as those guys, but I think we do a good job of, um, you know, helping with other guys and, you know, uh, just kind of shooting ideas off each other. I think, like, we have such a good starting rotation and, you know, we're all competing for, you know, for the first spot. And I think that's a great environment, but we're all also trying to help each other out and, you know, get the best out of each other. Um, so, yeah, and, but yeah, Robbie and Mark will be missed. And, um, but I think, you know, me and Logan, I think we got, we can handle it. Yeah. Luis too, obviously. He's he's the bet, so how does Luis for it is kinda of the better end of the group? What does he do for you guys? It's kinda of experience and um you know, he's he's always watching bullpens, he'll give you a little bit of advice here and there, just um he's just awesome to have around. He's just a great teammate and that goes a long way, so has he given you advice that you've benefited from? Um yeah, I think just like you know, we're all good at you know heaters up in the zone and he's like just don't stray away from that and all that kind of stuff so um but yeah he's just a great teammate use a water ball or stuff no <laughs> no they were just like what the hell you know it works for him but you know everyone's different so even get a smaller one yeah thanks thanks guys